Welcome to part 10.5, Stars and Our Sun. Today's aim is to describe the formation of our solar system and the life cycle and characteristics of stars. So the first thing I want you to do is take a look, pause it here, read through the following statements, and pick one that you think is true. When you read through the five statements, there's only one that's true. So jot down which one you think is true, and then we'll talk about it again at the end. Formation of the solar system. Our solar system formed about 5 billion years ago from a giant cloud of gas and debris called the solar nebula. So the solar system formed all together at the same time. The sun, the planets, the moons, everything in between, they all formed together. You can find this in the reference table on page 8 at the beginning of our timeline when it says the solar system and Earth formed about 4.6 billion years ago. Planets, again, formed during the birth of the sun by the buildup of material in the solar nebula. The nebula was a big cloud of gas and dust that came together due to gravity and then forms our solar system. So our sun provides all the heat and light we need to make life as we know it possible on Earth. It's just a very average star. It's average temperature, average size, everything about it is very average. It's made up of the two main gases, hydrogen and helium. And again, it's about 5 billion years old, the same, same uh, age as our Earth. And it's about halfway through its life cycle, so it's going to live for about another 5 billion years. Sunspots. Okay, have you ever um, heard about sunspots? You can see this is a picture taken with a special uh, camera that can take a picture of the sun without blinding the person taking it. There are these dark spots that appear on the sun. Um, they're actually cooler um, spots on the surface of the sun, and we use these in many ways to study the sun, and it actually has some effects on our climate as well. This is a close-up image here in the corner of those sunspots. Okay, they occur in a pattern. And these cycle about every 11 years. So we have cycles of lots of sunspots and then less sunspots. And every 11 years, there's a, a change in the amount of sunspots. Galileo used sunspots to measure the speed of rotation of the sun to be about four weeks. So if you, again, if you check your reference table on page 15, it tells you that, Earth, um, that the sun does, in fact, rotate. And it rotates about every 28 days. So it makes one full spin in, the sun, in our solar system every 28 days, which is about four weeks. So if you take a look at the sunspots, you'll see them come back around and about four weeks later. Now let's talk about stars. As we know, we have one star in our solar system, the sun. But we see plenty of stars out there in the night sky, although you'll see many, many more if you go to places that don't have as much light pollution as we have here um, on Long Island in New York. If you've ever been upstate or in Pennsylvania, someplace a little less populated, you tend to be able to see a lot more stars in the night sky. There's not as much light um, from the houses and businesses that is polluting out the, uh, the stars. So stars are simply large spheres of gas that are held together by a balance between gravitational attraction and heat expansion. So a delicate balance keeps it together. Gravity is pulling it in, heat expansion is pushing it out, and we have something, if you remember that, where we have a balance between two forces. This is dynamic equilibrium, and that's what holds the star together. And energy within the star is produced by nuclear fusion. So nuclear fusion is when you have two hydrogen uh, molecules. So we, if you're familiar, if you remember your periodic table, hydrogen is H and it's got one. It's number one on the periodic table. If you have two hydrogen um, atoms, and let's pretend this is the nucleus. I'm just drawing it for just cartoon uh, uh, representation here. Nuclear fusion means the two nucleuses of the two hydrogen atoms collide and they come together in a huge um, production of energy. And when they come together, they not only produce all that energy, but if you put two and two, two hydrogens together, you get the second element on the periodic table, which is helium. So two hydrogens come together, the nucleus combine, and you end up with helium.
So over time, the hydrogen being the fuel of a star, that's what produces all the heat and energy. As the two hydrogens combine, we get helium. So if you take a look right now at our sun, the way we know that the sun is halfway through its life, that it's about 5 billion years old and has 5 billion left to go, is because if we take a look um, with our technology and tools, we can see that it is about half of the gases in our sun are hydrogen, and about half of the gases in the sun are helium. So if you have half hydrogen, half helium, it has burned through, the sun has burned through about half of its fuel. Hydrogen is the fuel of nuclear fusion. Helium is the product that is results from nuclear fusion. We classify stars mostly on its luminosity, which is how bright it is, its temperature, and these two are related to each other directly based on the size or the mass of that star. Large stars tend to be hotter and brighter. The only time this is not true is when the star is at the end of its life. It uses up all its fuel and it might expand out before it ends up dying and losing its energy. So we're going to take a look at page 15 in your reference table. And we're going to color this in class tomorrow, but I just want to give you a little overview. So if you take a look, here's our sun, okay, right here. And the main things on this chart, we've got mass, massive stars at the top, small stars at the bottom. So you can see our sun is right in the middle, very average sized star. We have luminosity on this side. And luminosity tells you how much it, how it emits energy, so it's how bright it is. So we've assigned sun a luminosity of 1. So everything above the sun is brighter than the sun, and everything below the sun is dimmer than the sun. On the bottom here is temperature. The one special thing about temperature on this chart is that it goes backwards. Okay, so we've got 2,000 degrees here, 3, 4, 6, 8, 10, etc. So make sure you take a look at that. And each temperature correlates to a different color. Okay, so you can see in this range we're at orange, then yellow, white, blue, white, and blue. We're, um, if you have your colored pencils available, if you have a blue, a yellow, orange, and red, you can get those out in color. Otherwise, you could do this in class tomorrow if you don't have them available. And um, we are going to take a look here at the sun, and you can see it's a yellow star. And when you look at the sun, it is yellow. So there's your luminosity. It increases going up. Our size increases as we go up. Temperature increases going to the left. And let's talk about the different classifications. The surface temperature is determined by its color. Really hot stars are blue and cooler stars are red. Our sun's in the middle, it's a yellow star. Here's red, orange, yellow, white, blue, and in the middle is blue-white. We'll shade this in tomorrow, or if you want to shade it up now, that's your, up to you. But I'll go over it with you in class. Okay, this is, I have a few really cool star pictures that we can look at. We can see all the different colors of stars, so pretty uh, awesome to look at. Our main sequence is this big section right here. Okay, we can see that this is actually where the um, stars spend the majority of their lifetime. 90% of stars are in this category, in the main sequence. Over their lifetime, um, their characteristic, their classifications change based on how it develops. Most stars spend most of their lives as main sequence stars. Our sun is a main sequence star. So let's take a look at our chart and see if we can figure out the answers to these questions. So you take a look. If you want to pause while you um, are looking for the answer, you could do that. Otherwise, I'm going to put the answers up. What type of star is 3,000 degrees and has a luminosity of about 1,000? And these would be giants. What is the temperature and luminosity of our sun? 6,000 degrees Celsius or Kelvin, and the luminosity is 1. Name a star with a temperature of 6,000 degrees and a luminosity of 5,000. And this would be Polaris. Giants and supergiants are right up here on the top right corner. Dwarf stars are down here on the bottom left. And let's talk about the life cycle now of stars. Stars originate from nebula, which is a cloud of gas and dust, just like our solar system, also initiated from a nebula. A star is born 
When gravity increases pulling that gas and dust inward, it attracts in more gas and dust, and this all collects, and eventually nuclear fusion begins to happen. So two hydrogen atoms start to collide, and they form helium. This causes the temperature of the gas to increase. And then the star begins to emit energy. Now it joins the main sequence. It's on the main sequence. This image shows um, some of the birth stages of a star. You can read through that and pause. The death of a star, stellar death. Stars begin to die when they start to lose their hydrogen. Once they've depleted all their hydrogen, they ha are not able to engage in nuclear fusion. The core of the star, once it can't expand outwards, now the gravity is pulling in more than it's expanding out from the nuclear fusion, so it begins to contract and the shell of the core actually expands. So these are the steps in the depth of a star. A sun-like star is this picture. So a sun-like star, um, these are the stages. I believe you're drawing those in into your notes. Um, a sun-like star first expands into a red giant. And once those outer layers expand out, it will begin to drift off into space in what's called a planetary nebula. And it cools and shrinks into a white dwarf and eventually loses all of its energy, um, all of its heat, into space, and it becomes a black dwarf. So that is the life cycle, at, or the death cycle, of our sun. It will not explode into a supernova. Our sun is actually not large enough to become a supernova. So we're going to draw this in on your reference table. So if you want to turn to page 15, on the top here, you can use your pen or pencil and draw in the life cycle of our sun. So a nebula, you can draw off to the right here, is the gas cloud. That's the beginning stage of our sun. Okay? It then becomes a protostar, which is a newborn star, eventually getting to the point we're at now. This is present time. We're on the main sequence as the sun. Eventually, it will become a giant um, as it burns off its hydrogen and only has helium remaining. Once it burns, then it starts to burn the helium. Once it burns off its helium, it then will lose energy and come back down over here into planetary nebula when it burns off um, all of its outer layers, bringing it down here to a white dwarf. And eventually it burns everything off and becomes a black dwarf and comes to where it's much cooler and recycles all of the leftover materials will become a new nebula for another star. So that's where we're headed in another 5 billion years or so is to be beginning of giant stage and then planetary nebula and white dwarf and into the death, complete death of the sun. And now a larger star, there's two paths a larger star can take depending on how big it is. A huge star will become a red supergiant. Ours will only become a red giant. Then it will supernova and eventually turn into a neutron star. Uh, these are pictures of neutron stars that are, that are actually very pretty. A neutron star forms after a supernova of a high mass star. A giant star, which is the biggest type, also becomes a red supergiant supernovas and becomes a black hole. So this is how you get the uh, black hole formed, is from a giant star, which would be more than three times the mass of our sun. And here's some pictures of supernova. A black hole forms after a supernova of a very high mass star. So let's take another look. Which one's true? Our closest star is Polaris. No. What's our closest star? The sun. There are billions of stars in our solar system. How many stars are in our solar system? Just one, the sun. The sun is at the center of the universe. No. The sun is at the center of our solar system. A black hole forms after a very massive star explodes in a supernova. That is correct. And finally, our sun will explode in a supernova in about 5 billion years. That is not true. It will become a red giant, a blowout in planetary nebula, become a white dwarf, and then a black dwarf. And that is the simple death of our star, the sun. See you next time.